afternoon, everybody, and happy Saturday from Creative Barracks. This is Lacey Williamson. Uh, I'm back with our third story. For those of you that are new, um, each week we meet um, online and I host a live stream brainstorm session for children and their families um, to come up with a story concept for a children's book. After about an hour of brainstorming, I spend 24 hours writing a fun children's story, and then I assign each page to a different individual who volunteered to illustrate a page. So each week, we get to read a new story inspired by the imaginations of children and their families, and then get to see inside their imagination and what the story looks like inside of their own mind. Now, some children are as young as three, and some of these illustrations were completed by parents or friends of the studio. And we'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to create something so beautiful for us to share. I encourage every participant to express their idea of creativity through their illustration using whatever medium they prefer. You might see drawings. You might see colored pictures. You might see animated images. You may also see mixed media artwork, sculpture, and experimental art. And I think it's all just great. So thank you so much for being part of our storybook brainstorm. And here's this week's story, The Raccoon Rubik's Cube Caper. Stewie the raccoon was settling into his tree after a long night in the forest. A cowboy was exiting his tent below Stewie's tree. When he tried to slip on his boots, something was in the way. The cowboy reached into his boots and pulled out a brightly colored cube. He stared at it for a moment before he tossed it aside and slipped on his boots. The cube tumbled through the long grass and into the creek, where it washed downstream towards the little town. The raccoon couldn't stop thinking of the brightly colored cube. As the sun rose, he fell asleep, dreaming of his newfound treasure. When all was quiet and dark, Stewie the raccoon woke up for another night of foraging. This time, food wasn't his number one priority. Stewie followed the creek to town. Sitting against a storm drain was the colorful cube. Stewie the raccoon sat on a large rock beside the creek and played with the cube with his toes. Since it came out of the cowboy's boot, it must be a foot toy, he thought. Before he knew it, the sun was up. He had spent all night playing with the colorful cube beside the creek. Ah, uh, what's that? And why are you touching it? Yawned Rusty the Red Squirrel from a hole in the tree beside the creek. Uh, I don't know, said Stewie the Raccoon, but I like it. Ah, uh, if you don't know what it is, why are you touching it? It could be a trap, said the squirrel nerv nervously. Don't you think it would have trapped me by now? I've been playing with it all night. It's a toy. My toes can move the colors, said Stewie the raccoon. I don't know. I don't know what it is, and I don't like it. Toss it back in the creek before it's too late, said Rusty the squirrel as he skittered away after an acorn that fell nearby. Stewie the raccoon continued to play with his new toy and paid no mind to the squirrel. 
Every time he moved the color around, the cube would click quietly. Wallace the Mole strolled by on a hunt for worms using his star-shaped nose. With no eyes to see, he had to use his other senses. Oh, what you got there, big buddy? said Wallace the Mole. I don't really know, said Stewie the Raccoon. It came from a cowboy's boot. It's covered in bright colors, and I can move them around with my toes. Mmm, sounds like something a humans would make, said Wallace. Mm, although it looks fun, it might be dangerous. Best ask an expert. Who would know anything about something like this, said Stewie. Ralph the Rat will know what it is, said Wallace the Mole. He lives in the house across the street. Sit on the fence and he'll find you. Stewie the raccoon crossed the street, climbed the fence, and had a seat. Ralph the rat appeared in the attic window. Hey, raccoon, take your object to the dog in the backyard for inspection. If he approves, climb up this pipe. Ralph pointed to the eavesdrop. Stewie carried the cube to the backyard where an old long-haired dog lay in the shade. Ralph told me you needed to inspect this, said Stewie as he held out the comfortable cube. <clears throat> Say no more. I could smell that thing from here. Stinks like feet. Definitely from the humans, said the dog. Take it on up. Ralph the rat's eyes lit up when he saw the colorful cube. It's beautiful. I've never seen anything like it, said Ralph the Rat. Follow me. Ralph the Rat led Stewie the Raccoon down a ladder and into an empty bedroom. The human distractor answer machine will tell us everything, said Ralph as he climbed up onto a desk and sat in front of a small, flat and shiny wall with a blinking button. Hey Google, what, what is a colorful cube? Announced Ralph the Rat. As soon as he asked his question, the small, dark and shiny wall with the blinking button lit up like the sun and spoke. Here's a summary from Wikipedia. Rubik's Cube is a 3D combination puzzle invented in 1974 by Hungarian sculptor and professor of architecture Erno Rubik. On early cubes, the position of the colors varied from cube to cube. The glowing wall displayed pictures and videos. Stewie the raccoon and Ralph the rat watched as many videos as they could until they heard footsteps up the stairs. They scurried up the stairs into the attic, tucked away with their Rubik's Cube. By sundown, Stewie the raccoon had mastered the cube's colors, but unlike the humans, he had the ability to do it with his feet. Stewie the raccoon stayed up all night that night. He performed his Rubik's Cube tricks for the forest animals in exchange for snacks and shiny things. He eventually went on to win the forest talent show and even earned his 15 minutes of human fame when a video titled Rubik's Cube Raccoon went viral on TikTok. There you have it, folks. That's the story of the Raccoon Rubik's Cube Caper. I hope everyone enjoyed hearing about Stewie the Raccoon, and I hope you love to see the variety of beautiful artwork that helped illustrate this story. If anyone's interested in participating, we go live on Facebook at 3 p.m. on Tuesdays.
Every session starts with a reading of last week's story, followed by a brainstorm session for next week's story. They're from Mars to Pluto, and then they go from Pluto to Jupiter. So we want to take them all the way to Earth. The story so far is about um, aliens who have heartburn. They're from Mars, and they need to travel the solar system to find a solution to their heartburn. Um, so first, they go to the tiniest, coldest planet, is Pluto, and they have an iceberg, a Plutonian iceberg slushy. And they go to Jupiter. 67 moon cheese just makes the aliens gassy. So now they're bloated and uncomfortable. They have heartburn, have brain freeze. They're having a really, really horrible day. They go to Earth. In Earth, we know, what we know so far, what we've decided so far, is um, they need to find a lockbox at the Louvre, which is the art gallery in France. Um, and this lockbox is mistaken for a piece of art and has been around forever. Um, a dragon, and the dragon is guarding a candy apple dipped in Pepto-Bismol. We'll be back with another story next week. So stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe and tune in on our Facebook page, LVW Creative Barracks, on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. to submit your ideas for a story or sign up to illustrate a page.